Hi, this video is an introduction to electric current. And I'd like to say something really quick about this. So current is a flow and we're imagining this electricity flowing, right? So kind of like a, you might imagine a river right, or cars flowing down a, a highway or a freeway. Um, another thing that I think is really important to point out is if you look really closely at this word, it's referring to electrons. And the fact is, on wires in normal old electric circuits, what tends to, or what flows are electrons. The protons don't flow. Um, this doesn't mean that there are no such things as proton currents, uh, but those are actually very special situations. Whereas an electric circuit where the electrons flow on the wires and through the battery, um, that's not particularly special, right? You've, your cell phone, your computer, all electronics, the lights in your house, um, right? That, that's all because electrons are flowing along the wires and through the light bulbs, right? Okay, so a basic statement is moving charge is current. So if, if you have charges that are flowing, that means they're moving from one place to another, then that's a current. And Current is something that you can measure. It's a, it's a dimension of measurement, right? And it has units. And the SI, or international system unit, is called the ampere, or the amp. The symbol for current tends to be a capital I. And this is useful when you're using equations. And in a second, I'm gonna show you an equation where one of the variables is the current and the symbol that we're going to use is capital I. So here is a very uh, basic physics statement. Current flows and delivers energy around a circuit. So a really simple circuit that we're going to study today looks like this. So I've got a battery here it is, that's the positive end, and the other end is the negative end. And over here, I've got, uh, it's a um, cartoon picture of a light bulb. Right, so there's a glass outer keeping the filament on the inside uh, safe from corrosive effects of air. And um, what's inside of the glass is what's referred to as the filament of that light bulb. And so when the battery is over here separate from the light bulb, this battery can't put its energy through the light bulb so that the light bulb can turn on. But if you make it so current can flow on wires. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the, the wires and just essentially just touching them, touching the wires to opposite sides of the battery. Then what shows up is an electric current. And the current actually is such that the little electrons that make up the current are moving this way. So on the bottom wire, it's moving towards the right, and on the top wire, they're moving this way. Inside of the battery, they move from the plus end to the negative end. And inside of the tungsten filament, they're winding along so that they are trending upwards. So the electrons are going around this cycle, right? And this cycle has no ends. And that's what's meant by circuit. A circuit is a cycle. So cycles have no dead ends, right? No raw ends of wire. The wires are all touching places and 
there's really a, a circle that you can identify that each electron is traveling around. Okay, so this unit over here, which is the ampere, describes how much current. So you could, for example, have two amps of current, and that amount of current is bigger than one amp of current. And this, if a two amp current goes through a light bulb, the light bulb's going to be brighter than if a one amp current goes through the light bulb. What an amp is, one amp is equal to one coulomb per second. And you'll recall that a coulomb is an amount of charge. And so what current is, is charge per time. And so the two amp current that I described here is such that twice as much charge, for example, goes through the light bulb um, per second compared with one amp, which is one coulomb every second. And that's the sense in which a two amp current is going to deliver energy to the light bulb quicker. It's because more charge flows through the light bulb per time. So, um, yeah. So the current is flowing, and as it does this, it's delivering energy around the circuit. And as soon as you give the reason or give a reason for the current to stop flowing, for example, if the battery dies or if the cycle is broken, an example of breaking the cycle is opening a circuit switch. Um, so if there are reasons for the current to stop, then the energy also stops being delivered from the battery to the rest of the circuit. So if the current stops, the light bulb turns off. So there are some other keywords. There is a word called voltage, and there's another word called resistance. So in the particular case of the simple circuit that I'm describing, let me draw this circuit again. So maybe I'll draw it slightly different so you can sort of see what the options are. So here is a battery. Its positive end is where the little blocky nub is, and the negative end is on the other side. And I'm going to imagine powering a light bulb. So I'm going to draw the light bulb with this simple diagram. Right, so it looks like a piece of wire enclosed inside of a glass bulb, like this. So this is the light bulb. And right now, I've got a raw end of wire and another raw end of wire. And there is a raw end at this end of the battery, that battery terminal, the positive terminal. And there is a raw end at the negative end of the battery terminal. These are called terminals because they are, they terminate the device. And the idea is, is the reason that these things are called terminals is because this place right here is where the air begins. It's where the non-conductor begins. So the electrons, they move along conductors really easily, but they won't go into the air unless you push them really, really hard. Uh, lightning strikes are examples of electric currents traveling through the air, but that requires actually a gigantic voltage. And that's not what you get in normal everyday batteries like this one. So remember that up here when I was describing the circuit and the cycle and that the current is going to flow until the circuit or cycle is broken, until there is a non-conducting path in the way. What you can see here is actually there are lots of non-conducting paths, right? So if you look everywhere along here, this is all air. But if I was to connect, say, this terminal to this terminal with a wire, then there is a conducting path along this direction right here. 
So in order to complete this circuit, what I'm going to do is, oops, not remove the air, but in, in fact, actually, in the air, put also a conducting path, just another wire. And this is going to be a, a circuit where light shines out of here because energy is being delivered from the battery up to the light bulb. And the reason is, is because electrons are being pushed by the battery's voltage. So the battery voltage is pushing all of the electrons. The electrons everywhere within the circuit, and actually electrons in, in the air as well. But this voltage given by the battery that's trying to push on electrons, when it tries to push on the electrons in the air, because the air is a non-conductor, those electrons don't flow as current. It's only where the electrons can flow as current, which is on conductors, because conductors conduct electricity. <clears throat> so that's isolated to the wires, the light bulb, and also within the battery. Right? So electrons are flowing everywhere. Okay, so... Um, so voltage pushes the electric current against the, a resistance. So voltage is given the symbol capital V, and resistance is given the symbol capital R. Let me clean up the drawing just a little bit. And the resistance in this circuit is the light bulb. Sometimes a resistance is referred to as a load. So resistors are specific devices that are designed to um, make a circuit behave in a particular way. A load can be a resistor, but it can also be a motor, which has a resistance. It, a motor, right, an electric motor can be powered by a battery. And this motor has to be hooked up to the battery as part of a complete circuit, right? And when the electrons flow through the motor, because they are pushed on by the energetic battery down here, right? Then the motor can do some work. That is, it uses the energy of the battery to do some work on some other system. That can include drilling a hole, cutting some wood, uh, lifting a car up off the ground so that somebody can work on it underneath, right? So, um, yeah, it can also just be a light bulb, right? Um, all right, so this brings me to the sort of final aspect of this topic. It's called Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law, what it does is it gives you a way to know what current are you going to get if the battery voltage is V, and for example, the load's resistance or the light bulb's resistance is some value capital R. And I just realized that I need to describe further units. We have units for current, but I haven't described units of voltage or units of resistance. And I'm about to write down an equation and equations in physics and in science, if you have physical quantities that are being equated, right, r related to each other, those units need to uh, work out in a special way. So voltages, for example, a battery voltage that's typical in normal everyday electronics is 1.5 volts. Um, so it's confusing because the symbol for the voltage and the symbol for the unit actually look the same. And the way that I keep them separate is I put these little serifs on the letter. Right, so this is 1.5, and I'll just use the single letter symbol. So this is the voltage of a typical battery. 
um, resistance, I'm going to say that I have, for example, a, let's see, I'm going to use a 10, what's called ohm resistance. So this ohm symbol, this is called the ohm and it is the SI unit of electrical resistance. And motors have certain numbers of ohms, right? It depends on the motor. Different light bulbs have different resistances and ohms, right? Uh, all the different resistors, depending on the materials that they're constructed out of, their sizes, um, and even possibly even the temperature, uh, the resistance can depend on the temperature as well. Um, for example, a computer, you try to keep cool, right? You use these fans in the computer so that you can keep all of the conductive connections a little bit colder, um, and that tends to lower the resistance, right? So the currents can flow uh, easier. Okay, so... Ohm's law says this. It says that the current that you're going to get is equal to how hard you push on the current, which is called the voltage, divided by how strongly the circuit resists current. And this is referred to as Ohm's law. And in our particular case, I have a voltage of 1.5 volts, and I have a resistance of 10 ohms, so 1.5 volts divided by 10 ohms equals 0 0.15. And the current, if you use the SI unit for voltage and resistance, you will get the SI unit for current, the amp. Right, and this is an example of using Ohm's law to predict current if you have knowledge of voltage and resistance. All right.